Okay, there's this claim that is often made that the uh, Great Pyramid coordinates are the speed of light. Now, it's not really the coordinates. We'll see as we, we look at this video as to whether this is a coincidence or not. I'll explain that. But before I do, I just wanted to uh, say a couple things about does the Great Pyramid really have anything to do with the speed of light, even if its GPS coordinates don't. So to properly set a telescope to look at a star, actually to look at the light coming to us from that star, you have to account for the aberration of light. So you can get a technical definition by looking at, you know, Britannica. Uh, and the value of this, co this constant of aber aberration of light is 20.5. You can see that, about 20.5. Other people have given slightly different numbers for that, but that's close to what it's to. So to explain what this is, okay, if you're walking, uh, just standing with an umbrella over you in the rain, the, rain the, the rain's falling straight down, assuming it is. Well, if you start running, it's going to be as if the rain is coming down as an at an angle, the way that, that you'll be affected by the rain. So it really is. And so I used to uh, take my convertible out for a ride and, and uh, in the rain, and you, you, you don't get hit by the rain because the windshield, you know, sort of shields you. <laughs> so anyways, the, the, that, that's an analogy to compare to a telescope, okay? If light from a star, you know, if it's stationary, it'll go straight into the telescope. But if the Earth is moving, you've got to account for that. So another way to look at it is, is this picture there, the Earth moving forward. And, you know, the rest frame and the moving frame are two different things. So you have to account for that. Okay, so here's a top view of the Great Pyramid. Okay, so there's the, the yellow is the Grand Gallery. You can see that. And there's a top view of the first ascending passage. And uh, it looks like a telescope, doesn't it? And because uh, the Great Pyramid was used as an observatory. I, I did a recent uh, you know, YouTube video about that. Okay, so look at this. So the overlap on both sides of the Grand Gallery is just about the aberration of light. Okay, maybe that's a coincidence. But let's think about this. The speed of light is not a slam dunk that it's a constant anymore. You know, some people say, even Einstein said, you know, in his later years, uh, developing the general theory of relativity, that it wasn't constant depending on gravity. So the idea that it's a fixed constant isn't necessarily true. Just people have, uh, absent, uh, you know, uh, objecting papers, look online. And some people say the speed of light's been changing. There seems to be evidence for that. So it might not be a constant. Interesting. Okay, so here's the light equation. That phrase means the amount of time it takes for light to go from the sun to the earth. That's one astronomical unit, okay? Does the Great Pyramid have anything to say here about this, about the speed of light? Well, uh, former U.S. meteorologist Julian Gray wrote a book in 1953, which I have, called The Authorship and Message of the Great Pyramid. Now, I did a search on uh, Amazon today, and yeah, you can get that book right now for 200 bucks from a rare bookstore, and that's the only place I could find it. It's 185 plus the tax and the shipping, you're at 200 bucks. So I'm glad I don't have to pay that for my copy. So here's what Julian Gray says here. So there's the Earth down there. You can see at the bottom. And so there's a, a sun distance factor and a light equation factor, okay? So let's look at this closer now. Uh, there's the sun. So that the top represents the sun. So he's saying, you know, he's, that's what he's saying. The bottom represents the Earth, the, bo the bottom line of the pyramid. The sidereal year, too, you could say, but it's the Earth. Okay, so there's the distance from the sun. There's a factor. from um, So in other words, measuring from the, the ground up to the top of the sun, you'd have the uh, distance factor. And then the light equation factor uh, you'd have by measuring from the earth up to where the bottom of the capstone would be. Okay, so uh, 500... 5,813 inches, uh, you know, distance up to the top, and then take off 103 because that's the height of the, the capstone. So uh, Gray gives this formula times he, he, he divides by a million, and he gets that factor right there. Okay, so Gray says this gives the distance traveled in one second. He's getting this from the Great Pyramid. The distance light travels in a second, uh, you know, is that. And so then he multiplies this by the number of seconds in a day, and he gets this value. 493.3 seconds. That's the time it takes for the sun to get to the Earth, the light of it. The Lombre, measure using Jupiter's satellites, the, one of the most accurate measurements ever of, uh, of this, came up with 493.2 seconds. So does the Great Pyramid have something to say about the speed of light? I think so. Okay, so with all its other under wonderful revelations, the Great Pyramid does give us the speed of light, but not in GPS, sort of. Look. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Where in the world is the Great Pyramid? Okay, it seems like an obvious enough question. And, and oh yeah, by the way, does it somehow 
have a relationship with the speed of light. Sometimes you hear that the GPS coordinates for the Great Pyramid are the same as the speed of light. Dee, 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 dee. Okay, is that true? Okay, so a lot of satellite images distort the Great Pyramid because they're not taken straight dead center. And so you have to sometimes put diagonals on there, which I do to sometimes to determine where the center is, okay? So the Great Pyramid's listed GPS coordinates, where do you think they are? Well, actually, they're right there. What? How could that be the listed GPS coordinates for the Great Pyramid? The Great Pyramid is not even there. Well, Glenn Dash does a lot of survey work uh, at Giza. Uh, he's a, an associate of Dr. Mark Lehner, who's probably the greatest you know, surveyor, in, in living one in, 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 uh, in our lifetime. He's done so much surveying of the Sphinx and everything else at Giza. So, so Glenn Dash got permission from the uh, Council of Antiquities to get up Climb up to the top of the Great Pyramid. That's a hard thing to do. Wouldn't you love to be up there? That'd be so much fun. Anyways, he did that so he could get accurate coordinates for the Great Pyramid. All right? So he says the reason that the other ones were off is because they followed the helmet ellipsoid model from 1906. Uh, as we know, the Earth is not a perfect spheroid, but an ellipsoid flattened at the poles. Okay? Here's an exaggerated view of that. Okay? So, uh, the published location of the Great Pyramid is its place on the helmet ellipsoid, those, you know, which are the wrong coordinates. So, in 1984, geologists proposed a new reference ellipsoid, the World Geodetic System. But there was no practical way to convert from the helmet ellipsoid to the new one, so that's why Glenn Dash went up there. He wanted to get an accurate, you know, reading of where the Great Pyramid really is. Okay, so we talked about the distortion. The Great Pyramid's GPS point should be, you know, you'd want it to be right there at the exact top dead center, you know, where the diagonals come together. Okay, so is that where the latitude coordinate which matches the speed of light number is? Okay, uh, it's not light speed. I know you wanted it to be, but the coordinates for that top point do not include anything like the speed of light. But yet it is light speed, sort of. Okay, how? Okay, well, let's look at a couple things. So the old elliptoid model, we know, put the coordinates out there, which is wrong. Now, top dead center, that's where they should be. Well, Google Earth is almost there. Look at that. It's almost exactly where top dead center is. So if you're using Google Earth, you're getting a good, you know, set of GPS coordinates. Okay, if you use the speed of light, it comes out right there, which is not top dead center. So the speed of light doesn't take you to top dead center, but it does take you to the Great Pyramid. So let, let's see how that's true. So the Google Earth uh, Great Pyramid latitude is north 29.979.1677. Okay, so the uh, light speed Great Pyramid latitude, which you see there in red, is a little bit higher because it's a little bit farther north. You can see that, you know, the opening on the Great Pyramid is up on the top, so that's north. So since the, the, uh, the, the, Red L is, you know, north of purple, it's going to have a higher number. So its north coordinate, is, its latitude is 29.979.2458. That's a higher number than the dead center latitude. But it is it has this remarkable similarity to the speed of light, which is 299,792,499,792,458 meters per second. So look, you got the 29979.2458. So da-da! That's the way you can say that the, and it's not the GPS coordinates, it's just the latitude. The latitude of the Great Pyramid is the speed of light. But that's only if you take that particular spot there. All the other spots in the Great Pyramid won't give you the speed of light. And not only that, but think about this. Okay, we often say, many people say, and it is true, that the Great Pyramid, uh, the, the, the longitudinal stripe and the, and the latitude of it, the, that circle, touches more land than any other place on earth. So in other words, the Great Pyramid is the center of the earth. That means there's a whole bunch of places. If you're on that black circle there, your latitude is the speed of light. So if you're anywhere on there, there's a whole lot of places that have speed of light, not just the Great Pyramid. So that kind of coincidence of numbers kind of loses a little bit of its punch and power. Sorry, I wish it could be more mysterious. Um, but that's the explanation there. So I thought of this. Okay, if we've got the latitude as this special thing, the speed of light, let's think of another number that could maybe be the longitude. So I thought, why not pi? So, you know, we'll have the latitude as 
speed of light, and then the longitude will be pi. Okay, so when I put in pi, 3.14159, oh, it took me across the Nile over there. So we can't have the Great Pyramid that's the latitude of the speed of light and the longitude of pi. But what I did was, look what I did, I faked it a little bit. You see, I've got 31 point, and then in parentheses, 1, 3. It's the palindrome to 31. So I kind of said, yeah, I'm, I've got pi. I'm just throwing in parentheses in there 13 because it's a palindrome to 31. And when you do that, it is pi. It's 31, and then you've got the parenthetical 13. So you, know, you don't read the parenthetical. And you've got 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9. So you've got pi. So that's there's the cool thing. So I, you know, I found a... And so where that would be is right there. It's that point right there. It's actually the, uh, the red that's back there, okay? So, again, that, that point, the, the GPS point there would be the speed of light, you know, 299,792,458 meters per second. That's its latitude, and its longitude is 314159. Three, one, okay, but you got to remember to put the 13 there. Anyways, I was just having fun with that. So, speed of light and pi are the coordinates for the Great Pyramid. That's a way to maybe help you remember it. That's where, uh, you know, that's where the, the pi coordinate would come right there take you across the Nile and the Nile Delta there.